once your game's up and running, you're going to want some sort of collision to happen, and unless your game contains just ghosts or some other strange ethereal thing that doesn't actually collide. If anything is actually going to hit anything else, you're going to need to work out some collisions. And collisions are always a complete pain to work them out. Because if you look at this particular example, you've got to know whether any part of the circle is actually hitting any part of the square. And that's a lot of pixels to be checking. Luckily, there are some shortcuts that we can take. And once you grasp how these shortcuts work and what's going on, you can write yourself a very simple collision function, which is what we'll do in this tutorial. And you can use that function in any of your projects to detect collisions between two objects. It's a very handy thing to be able to do. So let's have a look at exactly what's going to go on in a collision function. To start with, we're going to have a box. So this is a box that would potentially enclose your sprite. Here's your, here's your game character. Okay, it's, it's called a bounding box. And your sprite might sit within this. Um, you might have some sort of gun here or something like that. And that bounds or goes around your particular sprite. Okay, so this is your um, box. And there might be a second box, which I will do in yellow. Okay, so let's have our second box over here. So we've got two boxes. And those boxes have got various dimensions. So this one has a width, and so does the yellow box. Okay, I'm only going to deal with width in this um, drawing so that things don't get too confusing. So we've got width one and width two. Now there are a couple of important variables that we need to calculate. First of all, we need to know these half distances. We would also do it in the y direction. Um, and everything I do in X is going to be mirrored in Y. And we're going to create a very important distance called distance S, S for the size of these boxes. And it's going to be in the X direction, so I just simply call this variable XS. And that is going to equal width 1 over 2, in other words half of width 1, which represents that distance, and width 2 over 2, which represents half of this distance there. Okay, so that distance is this, this distance is that. And this gives us a variable called xs. And then there's another important variable, which I will do in green, which is a measurement from here to here. That is from the center of one box to the center of the other. Okay, and that runs all the way across to there. And that distance is called xd. And basically, it's very, very simple. A collision happens if x s is greater than x. Let me do a proper x there, as I've been doing here. Is less than is greater than x d. And obviously, it would make sense when we did all the calculation for y s to be greater than y d. And for this to actually take place, we need a little bit of Boolean logic. In other words, we need to say a collision takes place if xs is greater than xd and ys is greater than yd. And that's as simple as it gets for doing the calculation. So the code itself we'll go through in a second, but the important thing is that we take a distance which represents the size of the boxes that we can calculate straight away, and we get a distance between the center points of the two boxes. And if the distance in terms of the size is greater than the distance between them, for both x and y, we have a collision. So let's look at some code. So here we are in Pico 8, and we're going to try and program a function that's going to take care of this collision, or at least it's going to report to us whether a collision has taken place or not. It's worth bearing in mind before we even start that this function is going to tell you whether two boxes have hit. And this is quite important. These are called bounding boxes. If I've got a sprite here, which is my player, and he's going to be running along and trying to hit an enemy, let's say this is the enemy here with a clearly defined gun, then what I'm going to have to do, I can't check every little piece of this individual character. I mean, I could, but the overhead is massive and the net effect on a game is pretty minimal, actually. So what instead I do is I design a box to be around this object. And the same here, this object would have a box around it. And this is called the bounding box. And so when I'm trying to see if this character here has hit this character, actually what I'm doing is I'm checking to see whether this rectangle has collided 
with this rectangle. Okay, so that's really quite important. We're always talking about bounding boxes here. So this function that's going to tell whether um, some boxes have hit is going to be a function that just returns have two boxes hit each other. So function box hit end. Remember the end. Always remember the end unless you want to spend your time trying to find an un un unclosed function error. Really annoying. What's it going to do? Well, it's going to return true or false. And so in this instance, let's set up a local variable hit and let's set it to false. So in other words, the default values, mouse out of the way, the default value is false, no collision. The next thing I need to do is I need to make sure that this function has got the variables it needs to function. So it's going to have the X and Y values of the box. It's going to have the width and height values of the box. And it's also gonna have the same for the second box. So the X and Y value of the second box and the width and height values of the second box as well. Okay, one of the nice things with Pico 8 is you can lay out your functions like this. You can really see what's going on. A little bit of extra space doesn't make any difference to things. So first thing, let's try and find out that distance. If, you, if I go back to my um, pen again over here, then what we're going to look at, if you imagine, We've got these two boxes that are trying to collide. We need two measurements. We need the measurement between the two here, which we called XD. And then we also need this distance plus this distance, which was the width one over two plus the width two over two, which was the XS distance. So those are the two values that we're going to have to try and put together. So if I come over here, let's see if we can actually program these. The first one we can program very simply is XS, okay? Because it is just width one times 0.5 plus width two times 0.5, or divided by two, your mileage may vary. It doesn't really matter, not in this particular instance. And we can get the same for the Y, okay? So YS equals height one times 0.5 plus height two times 0.5. So that's a nice simple start to those. Okay, so that's given us the XS and the XY, which are the values that were sitting over on this side here. The next two we want are a little bit more difficult to work out because we need to work out XD. In other words, what is, if I come back over to my pen over here, okay, and come into the blue, this distance here. Okay, now imagine we're on a screen here. I know this value, and I know that value there, and I know this value, and I know that value. So what I need to do is take this value, add on half a width, and that will give me here, and this value, and add on half a width, and that will get me there, and then take this value and subtract it from this one. Okay, and that will give me a distance. And then the final thing I'll have to do is use a function called ABS, which stands for absolute, which returns the absolute value. And in other words, it returns a positive integer, or not a positive integer, sorry. It returns a positive value of the um, function we're looking at, because it could well be that the second object is on the left-hand side of the first object, and so XD would be negative. And we're actually only interested in the absolute size of XD, not the um, sign of it. So if I go back to my pen into here, let's put in two calculations for those. So XD is going to equal ab absolute. What's it going to be the absolute of? Right, so we've got to start thinking about this. We need X1 plus half the width 1. Okay minus, let me just close my values there, how many brackets have I got, uh, like that, okay, minus x2 plus width 2 over 2, all right, and we're going to do the same, I'm going to type all that out again for sure, we can do the same for the y, okay, so y distance is going to be y1 height 1, y2, height 2. Okay. 
And because I've used absolute at the front, what will happen is that it will make sure that that's a positive value. Okay. So I've got my values in place. Now I've just got to do my check. If XD is less than XS, and this is the important bit, YD is less than YS, then this is the only time it's going to actually happen. Hit equals true. Okay. And finally, my function has to actually, I need to indent these to make everything look neater. My function has to return a value. So in here, return hit. So function will now just return a value for hit. Okay. So that is a function that you can use in your programs. And I'll put the code in the description below the YouTube video for determining whether two boxes have hit. Okay. I will do a second video showing how to use this function to follow directly on from this. But rather than having a 15 minute video to sit through, you can have this short one talking about the function itself and a second video talking about how to actually use it in your programs. Happy programming.